Hi, my name's Anna Doherty and I'm on the Virtual Scottish Friendly Children's Book Tour. I'm an author and an illustrator, which means I write books and I draw pictures for them. And the book we're going to talk about today is this one. So it's called The Fantastically Feminist and Totally True Story of the Mathematician Extraordinaire Ada Lovelace. That's a really long title, so let's look at it in pieces. The Fantastically Feminist. Does anyone know what a feminist is? A feminist is somebody who wants to make things equal for everybody, but especially women. So we'll talk about that a little bit more in the book. And Totally True. So that means it's a true story, a book about a real person. So it's a non-fiction book. And non-fiction books are books about anything that's real. So real people or real places or real things. A uh, story of the mathematician extraordinaire. So it's about somebody who does maths. And which is why I decided to write this book. Because I loved maths at school. Ada Lovelace. So it's about someone called Ada Lovelace. Who is this person here. And this person here. So, oh, and at the bottom it says Anna Doherty because that's me. Uh, before we dive into the book, I'm going to show you what Ada is famous for. This is what she invented. Uh, has anyone seen this before? Does anyone know what this is? I'm going to give you some clues. It's wooden at the bottom, and up here it's all metal, and it's a sort of machine. And you can find it in London, in the Science Museum. It's the first idea of what a computer would look like, which is crazy, isn't it? It doesn't look like a computer we have nowadays but it was made before there was any electricity. So this is why Ada is so famous, because she, she didn't invent the computer itself, but she invented what a computer could be. And uh, without her, we wouldn't have things like laptops or iPads or Wii's or Nintendo Switches or even self-service checkouts at the supermarket. So that's why she's remembered. Um, but let's learn a little bit about her. So the book starts off, meet Ada's friends and family. So let's go through some people we're going to meet today. We're going to meet Ada, of course. And if you look closely, you might be able to see better here. It is wearing a crisscross dress. And I made her dress by cutting up an old maths daughter. And uh, you can always tell which one Ada is because she's going to be different ages throughout the book because it's a book about her life. But you can always tell which one she is because she'll be wearing her crisscross dress. Uh, and we've got her dad up here. We've got her mum called Annabella. We've got Mary Somerville. Mary Somerville is a Scottish mathematician. We've got Charles Babbage, who's an inventor. And we've got Ada's best friend down here, the little Mrs. Puff. She's a cat. Ada grew up in a big house without any brothers and sisters, so Mrs. Puff was her best friend. And underneath everybody's names, you might have noticed there's two dates. This is the date that they were born and the date that they died. So Ada was born in 1815, which was over 200 years ago. So things might look a little bit different in the book from how they look nowadays. For example, they didn't have electricity, so they would use candles to see. And they didn't have cars, so they would use different mode of transport. And they wore different clothes. There's no trainers and there's no hoodies. They wore big dresses and things like that. So look out for things throughout the book that show you that it's set in the olden days. So we're going to start off in 1816. So Ada is zero years old. This is Lord Byron. Lord Byron is Ada's dad. He's a poet and quite eccentric. He once had a pet bear and he likes to drink out of cups made from skulls. He is very clever but he can be pretty selfish and he's a rather nasty husband. You can only see his shadow here because at the moment his wife Annabella is moving out. She has had enough. This is Annabella and this is Ada. Ada is a very young baby. She was only born five weeks ago. She and Annabella will go to live with Annabella's mum for a few years. You can see they've packed up all their stuff in suitcases. They've got their candle and they've got this. This is a wally duck. A wally duck is a little statue of a dog that used to be very popular. People still have them these days, but they were very popular back in the olden days when Ada was around. So I gave her a little wally duck so you can spot him on lots of the pages. So you've got to spot the wally duck, you've got to spot Mrs. Puff the cat, you've got to spot Ada in her crisscross outfits. Lots of things to spot. So we skip forward a few years to 1826 when Ada is about 10. Annabella doesn't want Ada growing up poetic and eccentric like her dad, so she asks the best tutors from all over the country to teach Ada non-imaginative subjects like maths, science and logic. Her teachers are very strict. Ada is punished if she doesn't work hard enough. Her favourite subjects are geography, she especially likes volcanoes, and maths of course. 
And if you have a look, very, very, very close, you can see that Ada is using a feather to write. That's an old fashioned type of pen because they didn't have pens like we have now. And it's called a quill and you would dip it into this little ink pot that you could write with it. And we've got the dog up here and those with very sharp eyes will notice there's a photograph of Mrs. Buff. So in, now we're at 1828, so Ada's about 11 or 12. Ada loves steam engines and finding out about how things work. She spends hours and hours designing her own flying machines, trying to build wings out of lots of different materials. She's just written a note to Annabella to explain her latest idea. My dear mother, I'm going to begin my paper wings tomorrow and I feel almost convinced that with a year or so's experience and practice, I shall be able to bring the art of flying to great perfection. I think of writing a book of flyology. Your very affectionate carrier pigeon. And you can see Ada's been designing lots of stuff. She's got drawings of steam engines. She's got drawings of bird's wings. She's got scrunched up pieces of paper when the idea didn't work. She's got little inky handprints and she's been cutting out feathers and her doll's wearing wings. And did anyone spot Mrs. Puff hiding up here in the corner, wearing her own little set of wings? So Ada loves maths and science and machines from a very early age. And we're going to skip forward a few years to 1833. And Ada is 17 now. Um, you can see that the characters here are in this. This is called carriage. And it's an old fashioned way of traveling around it because there wasn't cars back in those days. And the carriage is pulled by a horse. You can see the little horse's bum here. Not the whole horse, but you can just see him poking off the page. Um, and we've got Ada in her checkered dress. We've got Mary Somerville, do you remember her? She's the Scottish mathematician from the beginning. And we've got Annabella, Ada's mum. So Annabella has hired a tutor called Mary Somerville to teach Ada maths. The three women get along wonderfully and Mary invites Annabella and Ada along to a party being hosted by an engineer called Charles Babbage. So off they go to the party. And do you see Mrs. Puff is hiding on top of the carriage. She's going to go to the party too. Here they are at the party. It's very busy, full of lots of men. At the party, Ada meets Charles Babbage for the very first time. Charles is a bit of a science celebrity, famous for his gigantic and never completed clockwork counting machines, which are like very early calculators. They look a little bit different, don't they? You can see his is all made from wood and metal and ours is made from plastic and electronics. And he's got cogs to turn around and do sums and we've got buttons now. And our calculator we can put in our school bags. His calculator was like this size, you couldn't carry that to school. So this is called Difference Engine and he's showing it to Ada. No one else at the party can make head or tail of the machine, but Ada understands how it works immediately and is completely fascinated by it. From this moment on, Ada spends a lot of time with Babbage, talking about their shared love of engines and maths, and also birds and parrots. He tells her about his next counting machine, which will be called the Analytical Engine. And the Analytical Engine is the one that we met at the beginning, so they're about to invent that. So we'll just skip forwards to 1842. 1842, Ada would be about 26 years old. Ada is hard at work translating a paper about Babbage's analytical engine. And she's adding in her own notes. These notes will be what make her world famous because she's thinking in ways that nobody has ever thought before. She's realized that the engine might act upon other things besides number. The engine might compose elaborate and scientific pieces of music. You can see that this is in a different font, the bit that I just read. That's because it's a quote of what Ada really said. Babbage and other inventors have only ever talked about making machines that count, like calculators. It's Ada who first thinks that machines could be useful for you making music and texts and pictures and sounds. She's basically describing the first computer. So all these other famous scientists at the time had only ever thought about how to make machines that do maths. But Ada's thinking they could do loads of other stuff. So that's why she's so important because nobody ever thought that before. And you can see she's writing with the quill. She's using a candle and we've got the dog. We've got Mrs. Puff down there. So let's have a look at her drawing. The picture that we saw earlier of the analytical engine, this is just a tiny piece of the machine. This is her drawing for the machine. And it was huge. It was like the size of a room for one computer. 
and it's called the Analytical Engine. And this is in 1843, and she's showing it to Babbage. So she's about 27 with all these new ideas. Ada helps Babbage update his design for the Analytical Engine. It is the very first design for a computer. So it's got hundreds and thousands of these little things here. These are cogs, and they're what help to do the sums. They find out the difference between numbers. And it's got a memory, even though it's mechanical and run by steam, not electricity, by steam, it still has a memory, so it can save the answers to sums. And it's got punch cards down here. These are the punch cards. Instead of buttons, there are lots of punch cards, cards which have little holes in them to represent numbers. And you put them into the machine, and that's what tells the machine what to do. And it has a printer here as well. There's no screen like today's computers and calculators, like uh, how we have screens on our phones, on, on our calculators. Screens hadn't been invented yet. So instead, it prints out the answers to the sums. Amazing. So we're going to leave Ada there just now. And what makes Ada so important and so well remembered today is because back in those days, girls didn't really get to learn maths and science. So Ada was a bit unusual. Usually girls didn't get to go to school at all. And if they did get to go to school, they usually just learned uh, sewing and art, nothing that was thought to be scientific because in the old days, men didn't think that women could do science and maths, which is silly. But Ada wasn't having any of that. She loved science, so she pushed to be able to learn science and she pushed to be able to be involved in inventing things. And that's what makes her a feminist hero because she didn't let anyone stand in the way of her and she didn't let anyone tell her that she wasn't allowed to do what she loved. So she's really important because she was determined to do what she wanted. And she invented something that we use all every day now. So I have two tasks for you today based on Ada Lovelace. And ta you can do both tasks or you can just choose one. Task number one is if you think about the computer, it helps so many people every day. So I want you to invent a machine that can also help people. Maybe it just helps one person at a time. Like maybe it helps your mom tidy up or your brother do the dishes. Or maybe it helps loads of people at once. Maybe it delivers food to everyone who's hungry. So if you think about something that you think is a problem and think of a machine that could solve that problem and draw a picture of it. And task number two, this book Ada Lovelace is part of a bigger series. Also in the series I have Michelle Obama and I've also written a book called The Brontes. And later in the year there's going to be another book in the series and it's going to be called Emma Watson. But that's not out till October. But these two books are out now and they're also about women who are feminists. So I want you, for task number two, to research another feminist lady and make a fact poster about them. So I'm going to show you an example. In my Michelle Obama book, there is a page which is kind of like a poster. So this is from Michelle Obama, and here's the page. You can see I've drawn a picture of Michelle in the middle, and I've written loads of facts around her about things that I found out about Michelle, which I think are cool or interesting. So here is an example. Michelle is the first African-American first lady of the United States. Michelle exercises a lot and has even learned to kickbox. Michelle's written two books. Michelle eats very healthily but loves French fries. So I want you to make a poster like this but about another feminist lady. So it can be maybe somebody that you have a book about, or maybe it's somebody that you learn about at school, or maybe it's someone that you've just heard about. And you can research about them in loads of different ways. You could ask a grown-up if they know anything about them. You could get a grown-up to help you look them up on the internet. Or if you have a book about them, you could look in the book and learn some facts. And I want you to make a poster about a cool woman. So it can be anyone as long as you think they're an amazing woman. It could be one of the people we've talked about today, or it could be another woman that you've heard of, or it could even be a woman you know, like if you have a gran or a teacher or even a lollipop lady who you think is an amazing woman and make a fact poster about them and why they're so cool and why they might be considered to be feminist. So that's everything from me today. So thank you so much for listening. I've been Anna Doherty and this has been the Virtual Scottish Friendly Children's Book Tour. And if you draw any pictures of women or if you make an invention, make sure to put it on social media and you can tag, hashtag Scott Friendly Book Tour and you can tag me in it on Twitter. I'm at Anna Doherty Ilyu and on Instagram I'm Anna Doherty Illustration. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon.